the last three JIRA reports that we reviewed, burndown chart, burnup chart, and sprint report, are used in both contexts of complete sprint and sprint in progress. The velocity chart is different in the sense that it is not applicable to sprint in progress and it only works for completed sprints. For that reason, you cannot even access it for sprints that are still active. It is a very simple but still extremely important and useful report, and here is why. One of the most challenging activities in any type of project management, agile or not, is properly measuring and establishing the capacity of a team, or in other words, measuring and predicting how much work a team can do in a specific time period. Traditionally, it would be calculated by adding together the number of people in a team, multiplying it by 40 hours in a week, and applying some contingency factor, like 75% or 80% or 90%, to support the assumption that people are never 100% focused on the project work. That would tell how many hours of efficient work the team can do in a week. At the same time, work that needs to be done is estimated in hours and then individual pieces of work are planned for each week and assigned to team members while paying attention that the total planned work does not require more hours than the calculated number of hours the team can do. This approach has many deficiencies, including arbitrary contingency factor based on best practices and generalized for any team, totally discarding the fact that all teams are different. But for the lack of a better way, it has been and still is widely used. Scrum introduced the concept of velocity, which is using the reversed approach. Instead of forward planning, how much work a team can do based on some generic assumptions and not taking into account the capabilities of a specific team, Scrum has introduced the concept of measuring over the course of several sprints how much work a team did in every sprint and then using that number as an indicator of capabilities of that team. It has been proven that such number tends to fluctuate very little from one sprint to another, and it has established itself as a valid and fairly reliable measurement of a team capacity. The number is called team velocity, and it is represented in JIRA's velocity report. We get to the report by clicking on the velocity report in the reports list. When the report opens, it is obvious that there is no interactivity, like we saw in the previous three reports. There are no sprint or unit switches or links to sprint issues. Basically, this report contains a list of sprints and two numbers associated with each sprint, committed points and completed points. Committed points value represents how much work did a team planned to do in the sprint, and completed points represent how much work they actually did. They are displayed as a bar chart side by side for each sprint, as you can see here for the Scruffy sprint. There is also a list format underneath the diagram, and here we can actually click on the link to get into the sprint report for each listed sprint. We see here that for the Scruffy Sprint, we planned 12 points and completed 12 points of work. However, our project is a course project, and as such, sometimes it might not reflect things as a real project would. As you can expect, this kind of perfect match does not happen very often, as no one can plan that well. So, let's look into something more realistic an actual project velocity report. We see here that in the first sprint, the team planned to complete 106 points and completed 138 points instead. Obviously, they added work during the sprint, and that means that they planned for less 
than what they actually could do. For the second sprint, they planned 185 points and completed 122. In this sprint, the opposite thing happened. The team planned way more than they could do and some work was not completed by the time sprint ended. When we looked into the same real-life project in previous lessons, we saw this reflected in a burndown and burn up charts. Although it sounds like a gross misplanning, it is actually an excellent example of solid agile planning. Why? Because the most valuable information that can be drawn from this report is that completed work was 138 points and 122 points respectively. And those two numbers are not too far off. With this in mind, the team will likely assume their velocity is about 130 points and use that number as a baseline when they plan for future sprints. You can see that even though velocity chart shows metrics for each sprint, it must be used in the context of several sprints to provide its value. Another report that works on a multi-sprint level and actually does not recognize the context of a sprint at all is the cumulative flow diagram and we will learn about it in the next lesson.